Well, folks, here near the end of 2023, it seems like we've got a little bit of a controversy that's popped up this past week over on RPG Twitter and other spaces regarding a creator of one of the more popular D&D-like OSR-style games. But before we get into that, I want to remind everyone that this video is brought to you by our friends at Hellebard Games. Hellebard makes the kind of adventures they'd like to play, whether it's for Castles and Crusades, 5th edition D&D, or the OSR, Old School is in play at the table with Hellebard Games, and you can check them out on their website, hellebardgames.com, or DriveThruRPG. Uh, and of course, if you haven't already, please do click the subscribe button, click the bell icon for notifications, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and leave us a comment down below and tell us what you think of it. Um... So here's what's happened. A few days ago, it was brought to my attention, and I want to give big ups to Ben Poir for mentioning this on Twitter, that Goodman Games, creator of Dungeon Crawl Classics, among others, a very well-regarded classic OSR style, D&D style sort of clone game that brings in old school uh, sensibilities and so on, um, had altered the introduction between the 8th and 10th editions or printings of DCC to remove the names of inspirational authors and original creators, names like Gary Gygax, Dave Arneson, Janelle Jacques, uh, Jim Ward, amongst others. And we can take a look at this real quick, and we, we've got a lot to, to see here, so let's, uh, let's bring this up. Uh, so you see there on the top, there's the eighth printing, and it reads that you are a fantasy enthusiast of imaginative mind, familiar with the customs of role-playing, understanding the history and significance of the Elder Gods Gygax and Arneson, and their cohorts Bledsaw, Holmes, Jacques, Cass, Kuntz, Mensner, Moldvay, and Ward, and knowledgeable of the role of Judge and adventure. The tenth printing reads that you are a fantasy enthusiast of imaginative mind, familiar with the customs of role playing, aware that a party is strongest when it is most diverse, acknowledging fantasy's roots while helping it grow to meet challenges of the future, and to be acquainted with the role of judge and the practice of adventure. So you can see there that uh, there is both a content and in my opinion, a tonal shift regarding this. Now, I wish I could say that I just said, well, you know, that's certainly their opinion and move on, but that that, that got me pretty hot. Um, I am someone who absolutely uh, believes thoroughly in naming your 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 sources and honoring them when necessary and i saw this as not only an unnecessary deletion but uh to be quite frank a disrespectful one not just in the removal of the names but the implication that old dungeons and dragons was somehow not diverse or old role-playing games indeed was not diverse so I, I initially I was going to come down with wrath and fury about this, but instead I decided to sit back and I thought, you know, maybe Goodman Games has a reason for doing this. Maybe they have have their own wants and desires and whatever could it be. I certainly would like to know. So I, I decided to reach out to them. I decided to reach out to them, and uh, let me see if I can bring this up here. This might take me a second, and hopefully I won't tip my hand too much as we uh, as we go through this. Uh, let's see here. Can we... Nope. There we go. So I sent this email. I sent this email. I reached out to Goodman Games, and I said, Hello, I have a TTRPG-centric YouTube channel. You guys are watching it now. And when I'm not live streaming there, I cover news of interest specifically for the old school D&D crowd. As you realize, there's a lot of overlap with fans of TSR products from the earliest days of the game and your own releases. And it's very true. 
Uh, sometimes people in the live stream say, hey, when are you going to deep dive DCC? Or, or uh, will you ever release your modules for Dungeons and Dragons and for DCC and so on? Uh, I noted recently that you removed your thanks to Gary Gygax, Dave Arneson, et al. in your books, and I am going to upload a video expressing my opinions and disappointment in this decision, but before I did it, I thought it would be equitable to reach out to you and ask for a statement on why you chose to do this. So to make sure I have the right context, can you please answer these two questions? In your updated forward, you make the statement, a party is strongest when it's most diverse. Were you unaware of Mike Carr's forward in the first edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Player's Handbook, where he states, and this is important, folks. I have said this and said this and said this and said this. This is from Mike Carr. This is from 1978. This is not some polemic that I ginned up to try to appease a certain crowd. D&D players happily come in all shapes and sizes, and even a fair number of women are counted among those who regularly play the game, making Dungeons & Dragons somewhat special in this regard. This widespread appeal cuts across many boundaries of interest and background, which means that D&D players are marked by a wide range of diversity. In fact, one could easily use the analogy that there are as many types of D&D players as there are D&D monsters. After that, draw your own conclusions. There are unquestionably fast players, slow players, clever players, foolish players, cautious players, reckless players, generous players, greedy players, friendly players, and obnoxious players. But the point that Mike Carr is making here is all the way back in 1978, four years after the birth of the tabletop role-playing game, Dungeons and Dragons was already diverse. And in the previous slide, we see that the adjustment seems to indicate that this is a new thing that, that Goodman Games has, has somewhat stumbled on, or at least that was my read of it. So that was my, uh, that, that was my first question. Um, my second question was, in light of the above, what was your reason for removing the text thanking Gygax and Arnson and their cohorts Bledsaw Holmes, Jacques Cask, Kuntz, Menser, Moldley, and Ward? You seem to have cast this aside and intend, in, in, instead implied that this lineup lacks diversity. I should like to hear back from you before going forward with the video, so if you have a statement on the matter, I'd like to hear it. Yours, Bill Sylvie. So, uh, give credit where credit is due. This was sent to info at goodmangames.com. Um, I had no direct contact at that point with Joe Goodman, but he himself reached out to me. Uh, Joe Goodman did respond to me, and this is what he had to say. Um... Hi, your email was forwarded to me. The DCC core rulebook changes with every printing, both text and art. Going on memory, that preface has changed a couple of times over the 11 printings. I adjusted the names a couple of times if memory serves. The one I remember adding at one point was Jim Ward after I had the pleasure of working with him on Metamorphosis Alpha and realized I'd forgotten him in the early listings. I think there may have been other changes too. Related to the latest printings, I think it means exactly what it says. We need to acknowledge fantasy's roots while helping it to grow to meet the challenges of the future. Based on your note below, you seem to be reading an awful lot into it. I'll accept that. The OSR has evolved significantly since I wrote the original text in 2010, and I think the modern OSR is less about specific TSR luminaries and more about a sensibility of old school. At various points in the reprints, we also removed references to 3E and updated those to 5E, removed references to Google+, and updated those to more modern platforms, updated text to be gender neutral, etc., Thanks, Joseph. Now, I did, and I'm not sure if you can read that at the top. I said, thank you for your prompt response. May I use this email in the video? I will give my audience the full context. I did not cherry pick what he said, and I did not remove his statement saying that I seemed to be reading more into it that was there. I'm being fair and upfront with you guys, and I wish to be fair and upfront with Joe Goodman. So... That was my initial response, and I thought, okay, that was fine. Uh, and he did respond, sure. Um, and if anyone wants a clip of that one-word response, 
I will be more than happy to send it to you. But yes, he did agree uh, that it was okay for me to use the the emails and quote them in there entirely. I wasn't going to pull out quotes because, I mean, let's face it, over the last decade, we've seen so many weasel words be used, so many statements taken out of context in media, that I felt that even if I vehemently disagreed with what Joe said, it would it would be an incredible disservice, if not downright dishonest and possibly even libelous, for me to do anything other than include the full uh uh, text of what he said. So let's go on. Now, he did send me another email, and uh, it's this one here. One other point that may be worth considering. It's interesting to me how many modern gamers consider themselves fans of old school, yet don't know who Gary Gygax's name is, much less the other TSR luminaries. This is a fairly common exchange for me at cons. New fans love the look and feel of DCC, yet came into role-playing in the 5e era. They often have a very different frame of reference for old school than those of us who came on in earlier editions. Now, now, this is, is a bit of a puzzler to me. I mean, the statement is fine. I don't disagree with the statement. But in the context of removing those names, if it's interesting to you and you feel that there is, is a lack, I, I do wonder why then you would go and you would remove those names. I mean, expand the list. Give it more context than their elder gods. But to remove them seems uh, just a bit of a puzzler. Um, and that, I think, is what brings us to the final, uh, the, the, well, the, the denouement of this conversation. If it was left there, I would have his reasoning. I wouldn't agree with it in the least, but at least then at that point I could say, well, at least we know now. At least we understand now why he said what he said and why he did what he did. Um, but just today on social media, Joe Goodman posted this. Just a quick, quick reply. Happy to add back the list of classic D&D luminaries. I wasn't aware that people perceived it as so sacred. Glad to see this recognition is close to the heart of so many. We're about to reprint the book again, so we'll add it back. I don't know that we have the space to add a new page. That's harder than it sounds, and it is. I understand very little about the printing business, but it's not simply a case of slipping a new piece of paper in, I can, I can assure you. But we can definitely add that line back to the early intro pages, Joseph Goodman, and that came, uh, I think, based on the timestamp yesterday. And uh, the person that I received this from, again, this was posted uh, on uh, Ben Poir's uh, Twitter timeline. Um, the the two has been blotted out. So that's I don't know who was that to, but that is that is from Joe Goodman. So I wonder if in reflection based on our conversation and based for, on some of the pushback, he elected to say, okay, let's go ahead and let's put that back in the books. So that's kind of the timeline of events as it were. Um my my issue with it, my issue with it, goes back to the comment regarding diversity. Um, I feel that I'm in agreement with Mike Carr's statement that that uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, has been diverse. I have never seen a table refuse anyone for any reason whatsoever, as long as they were ready, willing, and, and, and able. That is, they had dice, pencil, and paper. Uh, and then if they didn't, some could be lent to them to play a good game of D&D or any other tabletop role-playing game. Um, my concern focused on the implication that the crowd listed there 
was somehow not diverse, that, that a mistake was made in the past and that we now need to amend it by looking to the future and dropping the past. And maybe that's just my read, as Joe said in his email. Um, but that's, that's what I think about the subject. Uh, clearly, this is something that's going to be remedied going forward. And I know some of you might be thinking about earlier controversies that, that popped up on social media regarding uh, Goodman Games. This is the one that I chose to focus on. And I, I feel that, uh, that in this instance, um, Joseph Goodman was was honest and upfront, and I was honest and upfront with him. I could I certainly could have come and done a video where I ranted and I lost my temper and I yelled and you know I I called Joe Goodman names and everything else and I that would have served nothing, and it would have been disingenuous and non-informative. So. Uh, he, he appears to have embraced the email where he makes the statement that, uh, you know, there are people who don't know these luminaries and, and they, they, they should know who they are. Uh, and I agree wholeheartedly with that, that, that people should be reminded who they are. Um, we as creators, folks, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And to not acknowledge that, to 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 not look at the past not not just masters because there have certainly been masterful people in the in the tabletop rpg space who've come along since gary gygax and dave arneson i know there's a lot of people whose first modules were written by uh creators for third edition or even e even fourth edition or third parties who might passingly know the names of Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson, but have, have never played in any of their adventures, even conversions to the systems that they started with. But one cannot, one cannot look forward without considering the roots of where we came from. This, this is not a matter of saying, well, you know, um, the first music that I ever listened to was, uh, you know, some band from the 90s or early 2000s. Therefore, that's where music began, and, and they're the founders of it. No, the, the, the founders of great rock music uh, were... Well, really, if you want to be honest, go all the way back to blues in the 1930s. But that's a discussion for another time. You have to acknowledge the foundational parts of a thing. And that Joe Goodman has elected to put those names back in there, I think, does a better service to the tabletop gaming hobby as a whole. But of course, I want to know what you guys think. I want to hear from you guys. Please leave a comment down below. Tell me, was was this just much ado about nothing? Was this a tempest in a teapot? Is it a symptom of a larger problem? Do you agree with this? Do you disagree with this? Were you on the verge of getting rid of DCC because of this? And now that he's putting it back, you're you're ready to, to welcome it back into the fold? Just let me know down in the comments below. And again, if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button. Click the bell icon for notifications. And uh, if you like what we do, you can support us on Patreon or on YouTube memberships. Links are in the description below. Thank you all, everyone, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.